This also gives the target machine more opportunity to identify a potential attack and take action to defend themselves. And here we see that all 65,000 ports are open. So here are some scans that are happening. Here are the source IPs. What's up code crew? In this video, we are going to be exploring a technique known as port deception to enhance our cyber defenses. Now, typically when an attacker is targeting a machine, they will use what's known as a port scan to determine any open ports. Once they know which ports are open on the machine, they can determine what services are running on those ports to then determine if there's any known vulnerabilities for them to exploit. Now, you can imagine if the attacker only sees one open port on the machine, it's not much attack service for them to find that potential exploit. However, if there was 10 services running, now they have 10 times more opportunity to find that known vulnerability. However, on the downside for the attacker, it's now going to take them 10 times longer to find that potential exploit. Now, you may think that's no big deal, and it's not. But what if it was 50 services running on the machine? Now you have a lot more work to do. What if it was 100 services? What if it was 1,000? What if it was all 65,535 ports running on the machine or appearing to be running on the machine? So in this video, we're going to take a look at a tool known as Port Spoof, which is going to make all 65,535 ports appear as always open. This is going to create the illusion for the attacker that there is a large attack surface essentially wasting their resources and time from the legitimate service that's running on the target. This also gives the target machine more opportunity to identify a potential attack and take action to defend themselves. Now, this tool is available on Kali Linux for you to just install with an apt install. However, for this video, I'm going to be pulling the repo, installing it, showing you how the IP table rules get set up for all the traffic to be redirected to the port deception tool. And then in the end, we're gonna have some fun with it, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. So here I have a script that we're gonna run just so we can get everything whipped up real quick. You can see that we're going to update our SSH port to port 2222. You'll see why later on in the video. Then we're going to disable password authentication for our SSH. Be sure that if you're using a VPS that you have an SSH key set up so that way you don't lose access to your machine. Now this is the real stuff here. We're going to create a non-root user known as port spoof and then we're going to clone the repository from Dr. Kiwi's port spoof .git and install it. This section here are the IP table rules that we're going to use for our logging and our redirection. Notice that port spoof is running on port 4444. Some of my advanced viewers may recognize this as the default port typically used for reverse shell payloads, but I assure you this port is in fact the legitimate port used for this service. So just wanted to bring that to your attention. And then finally, we give ownership to the port spoof user and switch over. So let me copy all of this and I'm gonna come over into a VPS that I've set up on DigitalOcean. I'm going to nano port spoof setup dot bash, paste that in, give it some executable permissions if you like, or just run it with a bash port spoof and just let that install. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and set up a password for the port spoof user. All right, it is all installed. So you can run it now with a port spoof and you'll get a default set of it running. We'll check that out here shortly. But before I do that, let's go ahead and take a look at the scans that are happening. So I'm gonna open up another terminal window. I'll keep this one here on the side. So to check out the IP table logs, we're going to do a tail F on var log syslog. And then we can grep for scan attempt. All right, so here are some scans that are happening. Here are the source IPs. Here is destination port. Now logging is not necessary for this demo, but typically it's something that you wanna do. If if you're going to be doing some type of threat intelligence information gathering. Okay, so the scans are happening, yeah? They are running and they all appear to be open. How do we know that though, right? So here I'm gonna pop over to a Kali machine. Let me grab the IP address. Let's export that target IP address. All right, great. So let's go ahead and do a port scan, right? So we're gonna pose as the attacker so we can see what the attacker is seeing. So let's go ahead and end map on the target. And here we see that all 65,000 ports are open and uh, end map is basing the service name off of what's typically used on this port. Now, a technique that attackers will try to do is grab the banner for the service. Typically, the banner will give information as to which service is running on that port. So in nmap, we will use a script option and select banner. And let's just do that on port one through 50. 
And you can see with the script of banner being used from Nmap, it still believes that port 22 is running secure shell. But we moved that over to port 2222 and it still believes that port 21 is FTP and the same, et cetera, et cetera, for all these other 50 ports, right? Now you can have a lot of fun with this and let me show you how. So let me close out of this port spoof, okay? And let's change directory into the repo, list out, and there is a tools folder inside. Go into there and you'll see a port spoof.config. So let me go ahead and nano that. And this is an example port spoof configuration file. And the way it works is you specify the port and then what you want to be returned to the scanner. So here you can see on port one, send back to the scanner this payload. On port two, send back to the scanner this payload. You'll, you'll see better uh, what this is coming up here shortly. You can even do port ranges. So here we're specifying from port 51 to 60. You're gonna send back a payload of fuzz here. It even has regular expression payloads and you see the idea. Now this section here is for reverse exploitation. I don't think that it works anymore as this is kind of an old tool, um, but the intention was that the attacker would do some type of nmap scan and then the payload would be sent back and would essentially compromise their scanning tool and execute these commands. Um, I tried running it and seeing if it would work, but I had no luck. But if you happen to try it on your own home lab, please tell me how it went in the comments below. We're gonna close out. Now to run it with that config, we're gonna run our port spoof command again, but we're gonna specify a C option and then the location of the tool. So if I was back in my home directory, right, you would do port spoof dash C tools port spoof.conf. Now coming back on our attacker machine, we will do the same nmap scan as before, grabbing the banners for ports one through 50, except this time I'm going to add a new option to output nmap's results to a text file. So I use this on option, which is output normal, and I'll name it nmap results one through 50 dot text. This way I only have to get the results once and we can take a look at those banners on our own time. Okay, and you can see the payloads that were specified in the config file are being seen thrown back to nmap. And because of our output option, we have the results also saved here. So let me go ahead and cat open our nmap results. Here you can see the same data that we saw on nmap, except this time we don't have to keep knocking at the target machine's door and letting them know that we're gaining some information on them, right? Now we're looking to grab the information on the banners, right? So here is banner, 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 and then the payload, yeah? So what we'll do is do a grep on banner for the nmap map results and here is everything that we received back from our target machine so it's pretty funny i thought this was a good exercise for you to see how decoys can be made again the link to the script that i use for this video is below shout out to dr kiwi for creating this tool be sure to tell all your friends about this channel so that we can have more fun together don't forget to hit like and subscribe and i will see you next time Bye bye